What's going on everyone? It's Mr. Hatcher. Uh, today we're going to be running through the Azaria levels. All right, so we're going to do a walkthrough on all the levels in Chapter 4, Module 1. All right, what this is going to look like, I'm just going to load up each level, kind of going to talk about syntax a little and what you need to do to get through it. All right, feel free to skip along to the level that you're struggling with. This is only to be here to help you, guide you. It's not here to just give you the answers. All right, so this is only going to be available after each lesson's due. All right, so don't just rely on it just to get the answers every time. All right, I definitely want you trying this on your own I and mean, really thinking about what the code does for each level. All right, so to get started off, level five um, it wants us to use an else is or an else if statement. Move mouse to the X. Move. So we can see all we have to do is move up five. Um, we have this loop here. So while here, get distance to mouse greater than one. So while we're further away than mouse than one, um, if we can move right, we should move right. If we can move up, we can move up. If we can move down, we should move down and so forth. All right. And remember, while it's always going to run this loop over and over until our distance to mouse is one or less than one. Okay. So I think this one's good. I think it gives us the correct code to start. So no matter what, you'll have mouse move up five, go to that spot, and then check it each time to go through. All right. I think we're all good. This one, we didn't have to change anything. We are just um, set on it from the start. All right. So let's move on to lesson nine, I believe it is, is the next one. All right. Let's go to number nine. All right, so again, mouse is on the other side. Let's see what it wants us to do. So we want to get mouse to the exit. We want to use an else if statement, and then we want to move to the exit marker. All right, so it looks like it started this statement for us, right? So it says, while hero get distance to mouse is greater than one. Again, so mouse is going to move, and we're going to be greater than one, and we don't know what's going to happen here. But if we can move up, we want to move up. Else if, if we can move right, we want to move right, and so forth. So we want to do... Else if <clears throat> hero dot can. So it really doesn't matter which way we go. We could do down or left since those are two. We'll, we'll go with down. And then we just want to have the hero move down, right? And then same thing here. Else if hero. In, and then we'll go with left. Then we should have hero move left. All right, it's pretty simple for this level. Once again, it's going to run through this loop. It's going to check to make sure whatever the hero can do, do that. So he can move up, and then he should be good to get all the way there to mouse. All right, I think we're all good on those levels. Just a quick review in case anyone needed it. Alright, next one, you're on to number 10. Alright, once again, we have wild distance to mouse greater than um, and we want to use that same else if statement. It's just more practice with the else if. Alright. So for this one, I'm gonna go ahead and type it in real quick just to get it there. Um, so you guys don't have to watch it. So we have an if. If hero can move right, hero move right. Else if, if hero can move up, if hero can move down, and if hero can move left, do each of that, right? So once again, I think we're all good on that. Make sure you're always checking your indentations to make sure they're correct. We'll go ahead and run this just to make sure it works. Awesome. So it says success up here. Go ahead and skip through that um, just to prove that it works. All right. Next, from scratch. All right, so the first thing we want to do is get mouse to the exit, all right? So we could have him dig right, and then just have him move right, dig right again, and then move right, all right? So I'll go ahead and put that code in. There's a few ways you could do it. You could do a loop, um, or you could just go ahead and put it in, all right? After that, we will need to get the hero over to mouse, right? So we'd want to start with the while hero, get distance to mouse greater than one, all right? Once you have that, then you can do that same if else statement where he checks each direction. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and put that in. Um, I'll probably edit it to where you don't have to see me typing it in every single time. All right. Um, but yeah, so pretty much just what we're doing. We're all good on how how to get mouse over here, 
And I think we're all good on this if else statement inside the while loop, right? Remember, while hero get distance to mouse, while it's greater than one, it's going to keep running this loop until he's all the way at mouse. All right, so success. We can go ahead and move on to the next level, which I believe will be level 14. All right, starts you with this code. All right, so we know we're missing that semicolon there. Continue to work through the code. While defeated enemies is less than three, meaning while that number of defeated enemies is zero, one, or two, it'll do anything in this loop. All right, so if hero distance to enemy is less than or equal to two, so just like it sounds, if we're um, less than two, if we're two, if we're one, and if that distance is anywhere in there, it's going to perform this. So it's going to cast the earth wave. It's going to add one to this defeated enemies variable, all right, because it's at zero now, but every time we defeat an enemy, we want to make sure we add one to the variable, all right. You could also set this equal to defeated enemies um, plus one. You can do it either way. It's up to you. Um, I like doing it the way I like doing it this way. It's a little quicker to type, um, but if you like seeing it long form, that's fine as well. All right, and then we're going to move right so we get to this next point. And then we're going to set enemy equal to hero dot find nearest enemy, just so when we come back up here and we check um, to see which next enemy we're working on, we want to make sure we're not still focused on this one. So when we start right now, enemy, it's going to be this one because that's the nearest enemy. So in this loop, we want to reset that and check again. All right. So we have most of the code. We're still missing a semicolon. And then outside of this loop, once we get here, or here, I, I suppose, we'd want to move down just one, all right? So we just type that out. Here, move down one, and then we're good. So let's run that, make sure it works. Awesome, all right? Now let's move on to level 18. <clears throat> all right, so we're here on level 18. Um, remember, I'm going to try to edit through the instructions, so make sure we're still following the instructions. Um, like I said, I don't want this just to be something you click on just to get all the answers. I kind of want you to be able to work through it with me. All right, so this one wants us to use a less than or equal to comparison. It wants us to defeat the enemies, of course, and don't harm uh, these people because these are our friends. We don't want to harm them. We just want to get rid of the enemies. All right, so once again, we start with this variable defeated enemy is equal zero, and we checked for the nearest enemy. All right. To start, we will need an if statement, right? So we're going to need if here or get distance enemy less than or equal to two. That's when we want to cast that earth wave, add one to that defeated enemy's variable, move up, and then reset it. Right. So I'm going to go ahead and type it in, and then um, I'll get back to you once I have the answer typed in, just so you guys don't have to watch me type everything. All right. So we're back here. So I went ahead and typed it in. So remember, we have while defeated enemies less than or equal to three. We check the enemy distance. So we get the distance to the enemy. Once it's less than or equal to two, we'll cast that earth wave to defeat it. We'll add one to this variable. Remember, you can do short form or long form. I like the short form. It's up to you, though. We're just going to move up. <coughs> Excuse me. And then we're going to reset this enemy variable so we find the next nearest enemy, which will be this one. And then once we get to the top, we're just jumping over and moving right. All right, so let's run it, make sure we get success. All right, perfect. So it looks like we have an indentation error. When you come across this, make sure we're debugging. Don't just give up. So it looks like right here, all we're missing is a one backspace, and then we should be good. Perfect. All right, so that's a good example of when you have issues in your code, make sure you're debugging, seeing if you can figure out the issue, and move on from there. All right, so we're going to go ahead and move on to number 21. All right, so I went ahead and typed everything in for us. I'm just going to run through it real quick, all right? <clears throat> so we have starts us with defeated enemies variable equals zero. We're going to find nearest uh, enemy for the enemy variable, and then friend, find nearest friend, of course. All right, so we have while defeated enemies less than two, since there's only two this time. If hero get distance between enemy and friend is greater than or equal to three. All right, so what that means is it's going to wait to do anything in here until the distance between our enemy and our friend is either three or more, right? So once it is three or more, we're going to cast that earth pit, add one to the defeated enemy's variable, move up twice, and then we got to reset our enemy and friend because remember, our enemy and friend is going to change once we move up because if we don't change this, if we don't add this, these two lines of code, it's going to still try to do it on the first enemy and the first friend 
um, and it's not going to work, all right? We're going to go ahead and run this, make sure it's good, all right, success. So now we will move on to, I believe it is lesson 22, it should be right after this. All right, I might not even edit this part out. I might just glide right into this next level. All right, so for this one, pretty much the same thing. We're just down here, but we're doing similar things to where we're checking that distance between. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and type in with the code. It gives us a lot here, but I'm going to go ahead and type in um, what we need to add and then go from there. All right, so I went ahead and typed it in. I like how it shows the indentations here. Remember, always make sure we're checking that. All right, so if distance between is greater than or equal to three, same thing. We're going to wait until our friend and our enemy are far enough away so our earth pit does not um, defeat both of them. Once we do that, we're adding to the variable, and then we're just going to jump right and move right. Same thing. This one's very similar to that last one. If you got the last one, you should be able to get this one. Um, I thought I'd go over it just in case, though. So. All right, we can go ahead and move on to the next level, which I believe is 25. All right, so here, pretty much the same thing. If distance, we're just doing it a different way. All right, so it gives us if distance of friend is greater than 2, if distance to enemy is less than or equal to 2. All right, so it's pretty much the same way. I would use the get distance between, but this is just showing us a different way we can do it. All right. So I'm going to go ahead and put this the code in it wants you to put. Like I said, same thing as the last one. We're just going to sneak right this time, still adding one to that defeated enemies and still resetting our friend and enemy variable. All right. We're going to run it, make sure it's good. Awesome. So I'll probably go through the levels that you should be good on pretty quick. All right. We're going to skip 28 because that's very similar to the last one. You're just going to add your variables there. So we should be good on 28. Um, we'll review 29, however. All right. All right. Here we are at 29. So it gives us a little code, but not much. So it gives us modified enemies plus three. three and it um, checks the variable distance friend and distance enemy, all right? So we're going to jot down. Once we have it here, all right, we need to check if distance of friend is greater than 2 and distance enemy is less than or equal to 2, all right? So it gives us another way to do it. So I went ahead and put it in here. If distance of friend greater than 2 and distance enemy less than or equal to 2, because it wants us to use that and operator just for practice, all right? So now it's going to check both of these things before it'll do this. So once the distance to friend is greater than two, which means three or more, and the distance to enemy is less than or equal to two, which means two or less, then we can cast the earth wave, um, add to defeated enemies, sneak up, and reset the friend and enemy variable. All right, we should be good on this. Remember, every time we use the earth wave, we want to add one to this variable so we can utilize this while statement correctly. Because if we don't, it'll just continue running that loop. And then we want to make sure we're resetting our friend and enemy variable. Run it to check for success. All six. Um, and we know we need to use an or operator and use a not operator. All right. So I'm going to go ahead and type the code and then discuss it once I have it all typed out. All right. So here we are. I went ahead and set distance enemy equal to hero get this or distance to enemy. Um, once again, you can use any variable you want. I just use this kind of make it consistent throughout my code. If not, so we're using that not operator, if not hero can move up, which means if the hero cannot move up, or distance enemy is less than or equal to two. So this earth wave will happen if the hero can't move up, or so either or could trigger this earth wave, or the distance to enemy is two, one, or zero. All right, so go ahead and run that. All right, looks like success. Now we can move on to the next one which is 39, which is also very similar to this level, um, but not quite the same. I'll just click on 38 again. All right, let's get to 39. Right, so here it wants us to, again, use an OR operator or a net. So just once again, there's a few ways. I'll do it a little differently than I did the last one. Let me type it in real quick. All right, once I have this, 
I went ahead and used if not path up free or not path down free since they gave us these path free and path down variables. All right, so I went ahead and used those. So if I can't move up or down, essentially is what it's saying, then I can cast the earth wave, then I can move right just so I can get through here. So if I can't move up or down, then um, I'll just cast that earth wave and then move over. All right. Success. So he's going to check each time, cast the earth wave. Go through there, um, and then we should be good. All right. Almost to the last one. I believe we have one more level, and then we'll call it quits for module one. Right. We are in the last level. This one, it doesn't give us anything. Um, so I may do this one up for you guys, um, just so I can have a level. All right. So I'll give you a hint. You want to start with for I and range. And we want to go with four, all right? So we want to start a loop with four. And then similar to that last level, in this loop, you would want to check for your path up free and your path down free. And then you want to use an if not or not statement, all right? So I'll leave you guys with that. Um, good luck on the levels. Of course, always let me know. Remember, these guides are just to be here to help you catch up. Um, they're not to be here for you to just get the answers every time.